perfect segue. Step one, the same step, nothing has changed. Inputs equal outputs. 50,000 equals 50,000. So we're all good with that. Step two, we now care about this stuff here because we need to subtract it out. We're only going to account for the work that's done during the month of June in the FIFO method. In the weighted average method, we said, you know what, any work that was in process, we're going to account for that also. The cost per units might be a little different, but it's okay. Right now, we have to subtract out this stuff that was done in a previous period. That's the big difference. You have to subtract out the equivalent units, and you have to subtract, uh, subtract out the costs associated with those equivalent units when you do the math. It's the main difference. So we know that these units were done to these percentages, which allowed us to calculate the equivalent units for materials, labor, and overhead. Everything else here down to here is the same. Down here, though, we have the total equivalent units we calculated for the weighted average method. We then subtract out the equivalent unit, the work that was done in a previous period. That's what's being subtracted out over here. Leaving us for materials, labor, and overhead, the work that was truly done this period. And that's what FIFO does. It's just the work that's done this period and the equivalent units of the work that was done this period. Okay? The primary difference between the two. That's step two. This is the total cost we ignore the costs from the previous period. The 10,000, the 1,060, the 1,620. We're ignoring the equivalent units from the previous period. The work that was done in the previous period, we can ignore the costs related to those equivalent units. So we're only trying to look at this 110,040. This is the number that counts in FIFO. That and the individuals for each of the, the three categories. The cost added during June, the equivalent units added during June for FIFO. For weighted average, the work in process plus the cost added in June, both equivalent units and costs. Is there a question? Ask again. Here? He's asking if the, the work in progress is added to the cost added during June. Not for the FIFO method. I just used the same slide. For working for FIFO. This is all that matters. Okay? Gonna miss work? You gonna miss work? Yeah. Mm. So all that matters. So we calculate the cost per equivalent unit now. These were the costs that were added in June. Remember, it's just that one line, not the whole amount. These were the equivalent units from June, subtracted out the work that was done previously and you started with. And you get an equivalent unit per category. And you see it's a little bit different. I think this total was $2.53, if I remember correctly, for weighted average. So it's a different cost. 
This truly represents the costs in June. The other kind of smoothed it out using some costs from the previous period. Okay? We're not quite done. Step five is a little bit different. But again, we're dividing our costs by our equivalent units, FIFO method. So let's think about now all the units we worked on in June as we think about work in process and finished goods. Okay? The, the cost we're going to be adding to finished goods here. Well, we know at the beginning of the period we had 10,000 units, right? 100% complete for direct materials. We're adding nothing related to direct materials for them. Um, so make sure I say this right. Direct labor was 30% completed, leaving 70% to be done. So we did 7,000 7, units of direct labor, 70%, the amount that needed to be completed for those 10,000 units at the 51 cents equivalent unit, which we just calculated. So it cost us 3,570 to complete the direct labor from last period's work. Similarly, factory overhead was 40% completed, leaving 60% at a dollar per unit, $6,000. So this 12,680 carried over. That was the amount that we spent last month on these units, and we added 9,570, and here's the total cost to go into finished goods for those units that you finished from the previous period. That's what this is. Then, we started and completed 34,000 units. How do we know that? You notice that we know that we completed a total of 44,000 units, and 10,000 were finished that started the previous period, so 34,000 were started and completed. It's this math that we did over here. At the full cost, the cost of that was 87740 So the total cost of everything that you're done with in your department, that you're sending on to another department, or it's finished, is 110990 the sum of those two. Now you have some stuff left in work in process. You worked on this period. It's going to be finished next period. You have to assign the cost based upon the percentage complete on them. Direct material, 6,000 units, all completed for materials, 50% completed for labor, 60% completed for overhead at the assigned equivalent unit costs. And so that's the amount that's going to be in working process for the next period. And it all adds up to that total amount again. So two things have happened in this. We did all this math. Or we, we looked at all this math. We didn't do it. The one we've assigned for accounting purposes the amount of the cost that's going from work in process to finished goods. 
and we've assigned an amount that stays in working process inventory to be finished next period. That's the net effect of these processes. So how do you choose between the two? Weighted average is easier. FIFO is a little bit more complicated, not terribly. Once you get used to it, it's just subtracting out some numbers at the end of the day, but you have to get used to it. If your month-to-month -month costs don't fluctuate much, your per unit cost doesn't fluctuate much, then you might as well do weighted average because it's easier. But if you have like a, a large component that's of, of direct material, let's say that's oil, that you know, the prices fluctuate, or for some reason your labor costs fluctuate from month to month, then FIFO is more appropriate. But if you're pretty stable from month to month, weighted average is going to give you a good enough answer. Okay, that wasn't complicated enough, so let's talk about, that was if you kind of have one department and then you're done. But you might have a fourth category of inputs. You have direct materials, direct labor, and um, overhead. There might be a fourth category, because three isn't good enough which is there's another department that produces something that is a component of your product. You have a department that creates a computer chip and you assemble computers. So you're going to get those computer chips transferred in. It's not really a direct material, but it's treated just like a direct material that comes in at the beginning of the process. That would be a transfer in cost. So instead of it being some kind of a raw material, it's a completed component that came from a different department. And they're just treated as though 100% it, it was added at the beginning of the process. Um, without going through the numbers, you just see it transferred in, direct materials conversion. Just another line item. We don't need to do that. So the production cost reports, kind of like the job cost report, just brings it all together. It talks about the physical and the equivalent units. All five steps are identified in the production cost report. That's really all it is. Each department in a company would have their own production cost report because they have their own process costs. Remember that each department would have its own work in process file, or work in process account, excuse me. This is what a production cost report might look like. Up top here, we're accounting for the physical units, units in, units out. Here we're converting those units to equivalent units based upon com com percentage completions and based upon whether it's a FIFO company or a work, uh, weighted average company. Then we calculate our costs for the period. We divide the costs by the equivalent units to um, have a cost per equivalent unit. And then you figure out what's left in work in process, what's transferred out as finished goods or going to another department. So the production cost report, no new n information here, just organizes the information on a single report for each department. couple of questions to um, finish ourselves up. 
Largo Company has a unit cost of 10,000. You can read it. Why don't you guys work on this? I like yays. That's good. Okay. You want to go? Anybody want to go through this? Well, we we got it. You want to go through it? Okay. So, so work in process. We know that we're fully complete as to materials. So there were 2,500 units at $10 per unit. That's $25,000 in working process, work in process for the materials. And we're 40% complete for conversion costs. So there's 2,500 times 0.4 to get your equivalent units, times $30 per conversion cost, which is, I think if you do this math, it'll be 30,000. So the sum will be 55,000, okay? Okay, this next slide, here's what we do. Work with your teams, work by yourself however you want. Um, when you think you got the answer, come on up and show it to me and then go.